Hi, welcome to uh, Breathe California TV. I'm Terry Trumbull, a member of the Board of Directors of the Breathe California of the Bay Area. Last year, we helped 140,000 people with uh, breathing difficulties, lung disease, lung disorders, uh, asthma, allergies. Uh, but even more importantly, we're trying to prevent you from getting those kinds of diseases, prevent uh, 500,000 people in uh, the viewing audience for these programs uh, from getting those types of problems. And arguably the most uh, important cause of them is transportation. 70% of our air pollution problems come from transportation. Today we're talking with uh, Bob Garzee, head of the Clean Cities Coalition. He has a lot of really spectacular things that he's doing and uh, we'll talk about them in 30 seconds. What it feels like to have an asthma attack is, well, you can't breathe and you can't tell anybody that you're having an asthma attack because you, you can hardly talk. You can maybe say one or two words, but you can't say much else. Breathe California has helped me come in contact with more asthmatics and more people who have the same case as I do. It's important to me because I don't feel like I'm alone in the fight against the asthma. Welcome back. I'm Terry Trumbull. This is Breathe California TV. I'm the Environmental Health Committee Chair. Besides Breathe California helping people that have developed lung disease, we're trying to prevent it. And uh, a major leader in the South Bay for as long as I've known him, probably 15 years that I've known Bob Garzee, he's been working to develop transportation that doesn't pollute, uh, that doesn't cause uh, lung damage. Uh, he's the head of the Clean Cities uh, Coalition. Uh, a year ago, they partnered up with uh, Breathe California, and we're going to talk about all sorts of real exciting, uh, easy to implement transportation solutions. Welcome. Thank you, Terry. A pleasant to be here. Uh, you, you look familiar. Have you done this show before? Yes, I have. <laughs> uh, I've been dedicated to clean, green transportation for almost 19 years. And I have some good news to bring to the members of uh, Breathe California and the community. Well, why don't you uh, talk about it? What, maybe start off with, uh, what's this little uh, three-part logo mean? Well, we joined together uh, not only with Silicon Valley Clean Cities, but also with the Electronic Transportation Development Center, which is a seven-year program of using Silicon Valley technology, bringing together that technology for alternative fuels, and then creating jobs in our marketplace. And those three organizations, Breathe, ETC, and Clean Cities, have worked very closely together over the last 14 months. Well, I have to say, I uh, find the title that we're using for you, which you were quite adamant on, transportation spe specialists, to be excessively modest. So why don't you talk a little bit about the uh, kind of things that you've been working on so we can justify me thinking uh, the title ought to be much more expanded. Well, I'm not as concerned about the title uh, definition as I am the fact that I've been involved with Breathe California and your board, including you, has mm -hmm. said that we want to have you be an official transportation specialist for our organization. And it makes so much sense because Breathe uh, California is focused on the health aspects. As you know, we always like to have you speak at our seminars because people won't argue about the health aspects. They might argue about other things, but that's why we have you lead it off. Uh, the Silicon Valley Clean Cities is Department of Energy. Their function is to focus on reduction of dependency on foreign oil. And they have 86 locations. And then the ETDC reaches out and brings together the technology in this valley that will create jobs because we need more jobs and we have so many resources that will help alternative fuel vehicles. Well, clearly jobs are a major issue, not just in our area or California, but the country as a whole. Why don't you explain what does ETDC stand for? Well, it's electronic. Transportation Development Center. We're seven years old and we have been focused on bringing companies together, 
not from Boston or New York or another city, but from Silicon Valley, and using that technology to solve the problems of green transportation. That will create jobs. At the same time, it'll solve the health issues. At the same time, it reduces the dependency on foreign oil. So that's a great green team, in our opinion. Well, we've done shows on this before, but I think mm -hmm. it's worth you re-summarizing. Silicon Valley looks to be, is, a very logical spot to improve the performance of cars by using electronics. So talk a little bit about what you've been doing and what you um, see their, their niches at, uh, with all of this. Well, first of all, uh, the ETDC and the other organizations are not just electric. It's, it's electronic, and that includes compressed natural gas, it includes uh, biodiesel, it includes uh, propane, it includes uh, all kinds of alternative fuels, things that will reduce the dependency on foreign oil, and number two, will improve the health issues because of the reduced emissions. But the biggest technology that we focused on and breathe is right there with us, is the solar fueling of electric vehicles. As we all know, electric vehicles don't create many emissions. That's good for yeah. health, reduces gasoline. But if you can find a source of fuel to make that electricity that doesn't create a lot of emissions, well, this valley, Silicon Valley, is the leader in solar. So we brought together a technology group that takes the fuel that the solar panels develop and doesn't just focus on the area of buildings, it focuses on using that energy for the fuel of the vehicles. We call that zero emission squared. You've got a zero emission vehicle, you've got a zero emission fuel source. If you bring those two together, you really have made an impact. If I can point to this area right here, yeah. this is how you do that. You put in garages that have solar panels on the roof. During the daytime, when those vehicles are out and doing their job, the solar creates the energy and is stored either in the vehicle, if it's there, or into the grid. At night, when all those vehicles come back, that energy is now used to fuel the vehicle so they're ready to go the next morning. Yeah, transferred straight in. It is tremendous. And the cost of that is if you make an investment in solar that maybe is worth five years of gasoline cost, you never have to pay for your fuel again for the next 30 years. It's an exciting technology matchup. Well, I know, know I'm completely outside of the script that you suggested when I say this, but I think it's real important for our audience to understand. Everybody knows in the 70s, we were the high-tech development capital of the world. And in the 90s and the early part of um, the, the start of the new millennium, we assumed a very similar role in biotech. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last five years or so, we are doing that in green technology, like what you're talking about. Most people don't realize we've had $10 billion of investment in this area, that uh, cars really can get developed here, and perhaps Tesla is the best indication of that. Well, so, yes, your mm -hmm. example of uh, transportation making most of the dirty air and transportation using up most of the fuel are examples of why you want to do this because you got to solve those two problems. So uh, I want to know is how in the world do I get an electric powered car that looks like that? Well, we and the group with Breathe have brought together Silicon Valley technology companies that make vehicles. And this next chart we're going to show you, uh, this, this one features a sports car because not everybody needs to drive a bus. Yeah. Not everybody needs to drive a motorcycle. But if we can go to the large chart, we can see that there is a total portfolio of electric vehicles available. Right there, there are 17 types of electric vehicles that are matched to being fueled by solar. Uh, as you look around that chart, it can be addressing parks, municipal fleets, uh, it can be addressing universities, it can be addressing the transit agencies, and all of those, as you can see here, we have shown that they can be fueled 
with solar panels? Well, as an example, uh, I teach in the Environmental Studies Department at mm -hmm. San Jose State, and all of the on-campus vehicles are electric. Yes. Um, so, I mean, that's wonderful. You and I, a year ago or so, were at an elect uh, showing off uh, in San Jose at City Hall an electric school bus. Talk a little bit about about that, it seems to me like a perfect use for well, electricity. Bree did such a great job of helping introduce that product, which was an all-electric bus. Uh, you had school children there making the announcement. Uh, this bus uh, technology has gone on to be a world record holder in its ability to get the job done at the least amount of dollars for the fuel. They have now gone forward with us, including Breathe, to say we want to do an electric-fueled school bus. The excitement of that is most of the schools have uh, fuel uh, for the building on their roof, which is solar. We're getting them the transition from the just the building itself to the fuel for the vehicles. And that solution not only is important from a fuel cost, but all those children riding on that bus don't even have to worry about the generation of the fuel. It's now done with solar. Very exciting yeah. project. Uh, I, I know it's back a step, but uh, the solar generation in parking lots is such a spectacular idea. At the water district, uh, yes. any of you that drive on Almaden, uh, Almaden uh, Expressway Road, it's just south of um, uh, Blossom Hill, you'll see that their parking lot is completely covered. And when they first put them in, they had employees fighting over the spots and it wasn't because they were getting any electric benefit, it's just their cars weren't baking and ruined the car during the day. But right. they provide all of their electricity needs for um, the uh, water district as and, well. And that's primary for the buildings. Now with this new technology we worked on, it's now going to be able to provide the fuel for the school bus because they're going to be electric. Now that's an exciting concept and that's a great place to see what this technology can do. Another place that's great, if you want to take a look, is we have uh, exhibits at the Tech Museum in San Jose. If you want to go down there on the lower level is a solar fueled pickup and on the roof is a solar fueled energy system uh, that is very exciting and is provided by SunPower. We provide the examples of the vehicles. But you can see there, there isn't any type of vehicle that you couldn't buy in the electric area that would be able to be fueled with solar technology. Exciting project, Breathe California is right in the middle of making that happen. As our Bob Garzee and the Clean Cities Coalition and the rest of our partners, this is pretty exciting stuff. Uh, we're reducing the health hazard to ourselves by developing green energy and not having any change to our lifestyle. Everything that you want to do, you can still do, but by doing it with alternative sources. And Bob has shown us 14 different vehicles. So uh, jobs, clean energy, better health. Come back in uh, 30 seconds and we'll talk some more. The ni nice thing about Better Breathers Club is we go in and there's other people sitting around with oxygen. It, it, it's almost a, a, a relief that everybody looks the same in the room. It's a funny thing to say, but uh, it, it's, a, it's a good feeling. Breathe California means having resources available to us that will help guide us and make our lives easier. Welcome back. I'm Terry Trumbull with Breathe Cal California. Our guest is Bob Garzee from the Clean Cities Coalition, which is uh, an integral part of Breathe California. He does all the good stuff. We do a little bit of administrative work to support him. Uh, anything more that you wanted to mention? I thought you did a great job, Terry, of wrapping up the benefits at the end. Well, then let's quit. And but I want to add one oh, more. Oh, we're not going to blank air for well, 10 minutes? Well, people do things because of dollars as well as health reasons. And we all know the price of gasoline is going up. 42 cents it's gone up in the last year. That's 14 percent. They're fully expecting it to go to hundred dollars a barrel for oil, which they say will drive it up to three dollars and seventy-five cents a gallon. 
when we deal with fleets, their biggest financial problem is buying all that fuel. And this approach allows them to reduce their fuel costs significantly. So we can add that to your bundle of benefits for what Breathe is doing. Well, the WAC's really serious on this. The average person doesn't know that uh, the United States in the first oil crisis that we had, where we were being boycotted by um, countries in the uh, Arab Peninsula, um, the United States was the biggest producer of oil in the world, but that ended in 1970 and our production in this country has gone down. That's called peak oil. Yes. And in the country as a whole, it was 2004, 2005 for the whole country. To put it another way, we've got everybody in China and India wanting to lead our lifestyle and the amount of oil available is declining pretty rapidly. So just to reiterate, that converts for you into what with gas prices? Well, 375 at the end of, year, end of the year is what they're predicting. The other thing this does from Breathe's viewpoint to helping the community is it reduces our dependency on foreign oil, which I can tell you is a, a concern for national defense. If somebody can control that flow, we are in trouble. Number two, it reduces the cost of the fuel companies uh, having to provide fuel to our transportation uh, operators. And number three, we use our own technology in this, value, in this valley to create jobs, which we got a 9.8% problem that we could solve because of our technology. Yeah. I mean, I don't think you can overemphasize this point. Uh, national security, jobs, our health all add up. Um, we have a serious debt problem in this country. And when we're importing over 70% of the oil and gas products that we use at massively inflated prices that typically go to dictators, we're doing absolutely nothing to help ourselves financially. We're diverting money when we have, as you suggest, alternative sources that can run on these spectacular vehicles. Well, the bad news for other regions is they don't have tools to help fix the problem. We in Silicon Valley have tools because all these companies, no matter what alternative fuel they use, need the technology in this valley to make them applicable, and we've got it. So let's talk a little bit about the electric vehicle's problem with range. Seems to me that for a school bus, that, that isn't the slightest bit of problem. Is, is that something you'd agree with? Uh, many of these vehicles don't have a range issue, uh, and that's why the city of San Jose uses so many of them, as you don't need a vehicle that goes 70 miles an hour and 150 miles. Uh, on buses, that's another issue. School buses are used from 7 in the morning till maybe 9.15, and then they sit there all day until 3, then they go back out and do the work again. Well, that reduces their uh, cost of fuel, and it gives them a range solution. Uh, we, and you charge them up in the break in the middle of the day, that, and nobody right. is working any more hours than they did. Exactly. So it's a great uh, bus project to go after. And uh, based on the children's involvement with school buses, that's why it's such a natural project for Breathe California, Clean Cities, and the ETDC to go after, and we're going after it. Yeah. Well, I have a, an electric vehicle, and I have to say that all the worries about range are just plain silly. I mean, for me, it's 20 miles to drive here. I have no problem going back and forth, which uh, I do virtually every day. Well, um, most people only drive 37 miles. Yeah. But the other good news is in the last four years, the battery technology has improved 300%. They have a new car coming out right now, which is called the LEAF, that they're quoting a 100-mile range. That's a lot different than what we used to only quote 15 to 20. So um, why don't we talk about, are we ready for Yeah, let's first? talk about another thing that Breathe is doing. Uh, this is what we call the faculty chart uh, for the Electronic Transportation Development Center breathe and clean cities. These are experts that we've brought together that have areas of knowledge that they can teach to other people. One of the things you know that people are trying to do is learn about a new industry so they can get employment. So the breathe organization, and you can look at this on your website, 
uh, has classes that they're putting together. Uh, these, these are ones we can pick from. Uh, there's, there's solar fueling, there's vehicle maintenance, there's uh, vehicle testing, there's compressed natural gas, there's motors, batteries, gen sets, all those things that people need to learn about. What is gen set? That's a device that's a motor on the vehicle that works like a generator and sure. gives the vehicle more range, the sure. one that you're bringing up. Yeah. The, the things that are coming up here in the next three weeks are two classes that Breathe and the ETDC and Clean Cities are putting together. One is on the 13th of, uh, of January, which is on uh, what we call uh, CNG and propane fueling, where people can come and learn about how you can use those fuels. So you and I know CNG, but explain that. Uh, I should say audience. compressed natural gas. Yes. And it's the same gas you cook with and heat your house with, but it will run a vehicle at a lot less the emission level and gets just as good mileage and is about $1.25 a gallon less than gasoline. Yeah, it still amazes me that most of my lifetime, people have thrown away natural gas as a waste product when it's the uh, cheapest fossil fuel around and cleanest. And all American. Yeah. And the thing that was good to me was uh, I like electric, I know a lot about it, but I went out and bought a CNG pickup. And I've been driving it for two years. And believe me, it does the job. And that's going to be discussed at this class. The other class is a class for auto mechanics that want to learn how to work on electric vehicles because they're starting to get them coming in and they don't know what to do. So that's on the 16th. Again, it's on the website that we have listed here and it will teach a mechanic how to go ahead and fix a vehicle when it comes in. And as you know, there's going to be a lot of electric vehicles in the market. So just to reiterate what Bob's saying, if you are interested in these or any other classes that um, we're offering, uh, go to Breathe California's website, which is lungsrus.org, or call 408-998-5865 to learn more. Uh, this is a way for job development to be in the cutting uh, edge of this. You know, for example, mm -hmm. cities in this area have been positively wonderful about developing alternative vehicles. Yeah. If you want to get hired by VTA or a city, um, you know, like San Jose, I don't know what they're fleet is, but it's an enormous number of um, vehicles. 2,385. Yeah. yeah. You really get on um, uh, cutting edge for getting jobs versus other people by having experience and knowledge of how to use clean, green uh, technology. And this workforce development program is now in action. I mean, two weeks from now, the classes are starting. We've already done five. And this is the faculty that you can't see on this chart now, but Believe me, we've tried to cover all the different aspects of alternative fuels. Well, I have to put in another plug besides Bob Garzi to manage all of this. Uh, at the top is a policy advisor. We have Jim Helmer, who's a, uh, while he was the city of San Jose's transportation manager, was taking my uh, class on transportation and the environment. It's hard to imagine anybody on advising people on transportation policy in this area. So well, I'd second that and mm -hmm. I'd also add Don Beams who used to be the fleet manager of yeah. the San Jose fleet until he retired. He's now on the faculty and there's many more. It's really a very solid group of professionals. Well, the really sharp-eyed people in our audience have caught green racing. That sounds pretty uh, spectacular. You want to uh, talk well, a little bit about uh, that? There's a belief and I'm a motorhead I believe in making vehicles that work, not just ones you show to somebody. Yeah. Competition causes you to test a vehicle to get it to work and get the job done. So we have a green racing program where we'll take the vehicles out and run them and stress them and be sure that they are ready to go. Well, it'll be interesting to see that on a, um, on a race. You know, most people don't realize when you see NASCAR or Indianapolis, they have all sorts of rules and parameters to make everybody racing competitively. Mm -hmm. But uh, all I know is that if I wanted to get into a race for anything that's uh, you know less than a, a mile or so, I'd take an electric vehicle. Uh, 
Rod Durden Sr. and I, Rod is uh, on our board, our immediate past uh, president of Breed California. Um, we were on the plane, and so instead of calling my wife to pick me up at the airport, I got him to give me a ride home. And he wanted to show off his electric car. Yes. And I don't want to say on TV <laughs> how quick that this thing accelerated, but I was slammed back like I was on a rocket sled. And um, the, the numbers that he could get to in a few seconds were uh, three digits. So, um, yes. And the torque that an electric motor yeah. provides is enough, if you've ever ridden in a Tesla, just throws you back in the seat, takes your breath away. And that's hard for a very small motor to do in a large vehicle. But with an electric motor, it can be done easily. So how do we get the public over this um, notion that somehow electric vehicles are sedate and they're giving up something? Because you and I know that it's just false. Well, we believe you need to get people a chance to ride in a vehicle, whether it's electric or whether it's CNG or biodiesel. You need to have people see what the results are. And we're trying to do that as much as possible. In fact, on our seminar on the 13th, we have four vehicles that are gonna be there for people to go for rides in to see what it can do. Pretty uh, impressive. So we've got about 30 seconds left. What is it that you want the audience to uh, remember about what we've been talking about? Well, one thing I'm really big on is, as I said, a lot of regions have problems with unemployment. So does Silicon Valley. But we're blessed with the technology to fix some of these issues, to reduce cost of fuel, to cause a new environment to go in place from a health standpoint, and to create jobs because the technology that's needed to make these vehicles successful is right here. And if you take solar and batteries and electronics, that plays a big role in what we're doing, and they're all right here. So we recommend you focus on Silicon Valley products and technologies. This has been Breathe California TV. I'm Terry Trumbull. Come see us next week. Mm -hmm.